So if you start and say, I'm gonna create one YouTube video a week, that's giving you five, 10 short form pieces of content just as a first starting point, a 15 to 30 second clip and post it everywhere. How do you encourage people that are just getting started yeah. when they're trying to learn these new skill sets? Hey, welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. I'm super fired up for this episode because we're gonna be talking about how do you eliminate overwhelm and repurpose content intelligently so ultimately you can get more subscribers. Of course, that this applies across social media platforms. And our guest today is Latasha James. After spending a few years in Fortune 500 companies, nonprofits, and tech startups, she launched her company, James and Park. She's been scaling a marketing business, is still in the freelance industry with digital marketing strategy. And then also as a content creator, she's helping people become uh, social media managers, freelancers, and sharing rock star tips for how you can create better content and ultimately get your message business out to more people. So Latasha, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm excited to dive in. We're here in San Diego, social media marketing world. And uh, you just spoke on repurposing content. Yes. And it's a big buzzword right now because there's all this demand to like, I need to be everywhere, be posting everywhere, and people feel very overwhelmed. What's kind of the state of maybe people creating content right now when you think about so much to do in so many, so little time? Yeah. Well, I think that overwhelm word is a key theme for all my clients, my students. They're like, I just don't know where to focus. I can't be everywhere all at once. And so repurposing really is my answer. I am actually the sole producer of all of my content still, which is a little bit wild, but you know, it really starts long form for me. And I think that there is so much power in short form content. Absolutely. Like we can't ignore that. But I always say that repurposing down is so much easier than repurposing up and, you know, stitching together 15 second clips to make a YouTube video. So focus on that core pillar piece of content to start, whether that is a podcast, a, a YouTube channel. For me, it's a video podcast. So combining those two and then repurposing down. And that way you can just distribute across the smaller social channels without all of that overwhelm, without having to think about like, okay, what am I going to talk about on TikTok now? What am I going to talk about on Instagram Reels? You already have that that system down. So you have been on YouTube 10 years. Yes. Modcasting five years. Yes. And how much content are you kind of putting out a week mm -hmm. by yourself? Yeah. Two videos a week on YouTube. So one is the video podcast. So the moving the podcast to video was a piece of this, you know, that this repurposing was a big piece of that thought process because I was recording a separate audio podcast and I was like, hold on, why don't I just put my camera, you know, set my camera up and make this a part of the YouTube channel as well. So kind of killing two birds with one stone there. So I started doing that probably two years into the podcast. So I've been video podcasting for three years. Um, but yeah, two, two YouTube videos a week. And so then once you've produced those, how much micro content, mm -hmm. repurposed content do you typically pull out of those episodes? Yeah, minimum. I'm thinking back to my slides yesterday. I'm like minimum on Fridays, there is about eight pieces of content that comes out of that one big piece of content to start. So there is, you know, YouTube, the podcast. Um, I pull a transcript that I can use in my newsletter. In an ideal world, I'd be doing a blog too, but that's next level. I'm not there yet. And then a, a few pieces of short form content. So TikTok. Instagram Reels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, up to eight, like eight pieces of content. And do you edit all that yourself and then edit from the long form into the short form clips? What software do you use? Yeah. So I use Final Cut for my main video editor and I find it really easy if you are editing your own content just to do it, like make it a part of your long form editing process. So I just use the marker feature. And whenever I hear something that kind of makes my ear perk up, I just drop a marker there on that first pass through. And then that way, when I'm going through to do all of the additional, you know, el you know, final, I final edits, I can just clip those into vertical or whatever I need. Um, there's also a really cool tool. I'm sure you've heard of it called Descript. Yep. So I use that one a lot for backlogged content. So, you know, I have, I mean, 500 or so videos on my YouTube channel. So I look at some of those top performers, throw those into Descript, and then I can basically do the same thing there. What's really cool is that they have that search feature. So I can search for different keywords. Like I'll search for numbers because people love numbers in short form content Five for yes yeah. exactly or any type of percentage or statistic or anything yeah. like that so that's really cool and so then you what is kind of i saw you had a three-step process that someone kind of shared from uh your session 
and they were saying that step one is create an outline for your long form video. What's yeah. the important of pre-planning when doing this repurposing stuff? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I first started on YouTube um, and before I was really thinking short form first, I was just kind of turning on the camera and, and, and talking. And I think there's some value in that for sure. It brings that humility, that, that authenticity. But uh, when you're thinking about eight different platforms, you got to be a little bit more strategic. So I don't script my videos, but I do outline everything. I just do bullet point outlines and making sure, you know, when I look at that outline, again, if I see like an interesting th way that I can tie in a three tips for this or an interesting t statistic, like I just did a podcast about um, why you should be a social media manager or why that's a great, you know, freelance gig to start. So I'm like, you know what, let me make sure that I pull some some statistics. I went onto LinkedIn and found some interesting data that I knew was going to stand well on its own in that short form version, um, that short form format. So I can just make sure that I'm planning ahead as opposed to like going the reverse and having to search through the content and find something that's actually going to be compelling. Are you ready to start or grow your YouTube channel? Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step playbook for YouTube success. We've helped thousands of purpose-driven entrepreneurs just like you grow their influence with video. Register today for this exclusive training at thinkmasterclass.com. Got it. So yeah, prior planning prevents poor performance. Like for sure. Or you go into it thinking all the way until the end result of this is eventually going to be micro. And then secondly, you say frame your shot horizontal and vertical. What's your thinking there? Yeah. So again, old I'm like an old school YouTuber. So I, I feel like it was the trend to be very zoomed in. And and I, again, I see the value in that because it makes you feel very close to the person, right? Nowadays, we got to think of multiple formats. So I just zoom my camera out just a little bit. You know, we want it to still, of course, work well on the YouTube format, but that makes it so much easier to crop it so that your your face is not like completely zoomed in on the phone. Uh, and TikTok actually has a, in their advertising tools, they have a like a PNG that you can download and overlay over your shot just to kind of test it. And it shows you that safe area. So you're supposed to be in this little green rectangle so you can make sure that your focal point which in most cases is going to be a face. If you're filming an object, a product, it may be that product. Make sure that that's within that safe area so that all the TikTok controls aren't covering it up. And I kind of use that as a loose guideline for Instagram Reels too. It's a similar format. That's super strong. And then number three, schedule time of the week to repurpose your content every week. You said you do that on Friday. Mm -hmm. Do you sit down at that point and export the stuff? Or is that the also where you're manually then uploading your TikToks and Reels? Yeah, I act, so I actually do my... Uh, repurposing on Tuesdays. I do it as part of my group. I have a membership group and we co-work. We actually do a video co-working session. So we just all get together on Zoom, turn our, our microphones on mute and like co-work for an hour. And it's really helpful because it holds me accountable to actually do it. I think repurposing is one of those things that's so easy to put off. You're like, okay, I did that big piece of content, you know, and that feels like the big, like, oh, I did it. I'll get to repurposing when I get to it. And if you do that, you're just not going to be held accountable. So yeah, I use that time to just go through and clip those, any markers that I've left in Final Cut, add any captions that I want to add. Um, you know, just, just get it out. I also schedule it out onto the platforms too. I love it. And so... Talk to me about the why. So mm -hmm. sometimes after hearing all this, even this could create some overwhelm though. You yeah. went to film school. You've been doing this a lot of years. It's like a muscle. You're like a bodybuilder in terms of repurposing content, you know? But when someone's just starting, it's like, man, just learning editing and learning all these different tools. Yeah. So there's kind of two sides to the question. One would, secondly would be, how do you kind of pace yourself and grow into this? But first, why even do all this? Are you finding results? And when you repurpose content, is it leading to leads? Is it opening up more opportunity? Because of course, if it's not getting results, then why go to all this effort? For sure. Great question. I think you have to test in, you know, marketing is one big test. So definitely, I'm not going to tell you to, you know, create, completely shift your YouTube strategy to go all in on TikTok if it if it doesn't do anything. And, and so I'm big on data, looking at my analytics and seeing where those leads are coming from. For me, it still is primarily YouTube. That is my number one refer to anything that I sell is YouTube. It's really powerful. So with that said, you know, the repurposing, it isn't reinventing the wheel. It's super easy to do. Like I focus YouTube first. My strategy is always YouTube first. What's going to be best for YouTube? And then if it it's an easy cut, if it's an easy clip, like Let's just let's just do it. What I do find from short form is that it really helps with brand. So it really helps with um, getting people excited. 
about content. And and I actually have found that it does lead people back to the podcast as well. There are little things. One of the tips that I shared yesterday was just renaming your audio. That's such a quick fix in on TikTok or Instagram Reels so that all of my audio always says freelance writer podcast or latashajames.com slash podcast or something similar. Yeah. So that, you know, when people are seeing those little sound bites and they are going viral, they're not for nothing. People are seeing, okay, this person's a podcaster. Let me go check that out. And I do hear anecdotally that people do that a lot. That's a great tip. And to break that down, that's where usually it's a song if you use a song, but when it's original audio, it might just say original audio and you can actually rename it and then get a little little brand pump to actually yeah. put your brand name in there or whatever. And if someone's like, what is, you know, as it's scrolling by and all those little touch points are what make up a brand. Yeah. As people see you more, they get to, you want your brand to be sticky and it takes time to do that. For sure. So then secondly is speak to your journey. Cause I think I want people to really hear you've been on YouTube 10 years, yeah. you went to film school. And so this really isn't overnight, even in terms of these skill sets, you're sitting down, you're doing markers, you're reverse engineering the whole thing and doing an outline. What do you, how do you encourage people that are just getting started yeah. when they're trying to learn these new skill sets? Just start. Honestly, just start. My first YouTube video, I think you had my tweet pulled up earlier. It was filmed on a Samsung point and shoot camera, like not a DSLR, like the old school digital cameras from, you know, the early 2000s balanced on a coffee table. My head was cut off no audio like it was terrible um i'm gonna be honest and that that's part of the process i mean every single year even even videos i've shot six months ago i look at them i'm like what was i doing and that's progress you know that that means that you're growing so i actually love that i cringe at some of my old videos but i actually love that so i definitely did not start here i know that you did not start where you are you know it takes time it takes building that muscle so just start with what you have don't don't even worry about equipment if you have an iphone i mean that's better than that Samsung point and shoot camera that I was using back 10 years ago. So just start with what you have. And even with the repurposing stuff, because I know it can be a little overwhelming, even this process that I'm sharing, just just start by clicking cutting one clip from each YouTube video and posting it everywhere. You can refine that strategy. You can get a little bit more strategic about what you're posting where and timing and, and staggering your content once you kind of get in that flow. But just as a first starting point, just make sure you clip a 15 to 30 second clip and post it everywhere. And and that's how I grew my TikTok. I mean, my TikTok is my smallest platform for sure, but I wouldn't, I, I mean, that's how I've grown it is just by posting like podcast clips on there. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2023, if someone was starting from scratch and they could only invest in one place, where would you recommend they build their personal brand and why? YouTube, youtube.com. Um, seriously, I, I, I think that it's, first of all, when we're talking about short form content too, I'm very excited to see what YouTube does with shorts. I know it's very early, early stages of it, but you know, YouTube treats their creators really well in my experience, better than some of the other platforms. And so I'm excited to see where that goes because one of the issues I'm seeing with a lot of my friends who are, are huge on TikTok and shorter form platforms is they're just not seeing, you know, the the money from it unless they have something to sell. And so very excited to see what YouTube does with that. Um, but on long form, I still do think there is such value in creating long form content. It is not dead. There's a reason that we've watched movies for years and TV shows and we, we pretty much always will. It is really the best place for authoritative content, thought leadership content. If somebody sits here and, you know, produces 50 videos, 50, 15 minute videos about one topic, that tells me they're passionate about it. That tells me they're knowledgeable about it. That is really the go to for authoritative content. Um, and then again, it's so much easier to repurpose down than do the reverse. So if you start and say, I'm going to create one YouTube video a week, that's giving you five, 10 short form pieces of content a week as well. So many bombs you dropped in this podcast. You're doing a lot of cool stuff. So if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? And of course, check out the show notes. We'll link everything up. Uh, but where are you at? Yeah, at the Latasha James everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, um, all that. And then YouTube, I'm just Latasha James, latashajames.com for courses and everything like that. I appreciate you so much. Sure, thank you so much.